one track in this course, we're going to finish up uh, health insurance tonight that will start retirement plans. I'll probably get most of that done. And then next week, we'll finish up anything on retirement plans. There's a little bit of the next chapter I want you to know, Social Security and workers. Then I'll do a review, and then we're done. Then for May 1st, strictly a voluntary class, okay? Anybody who feels like coming, hanging out with me, have questions, you want me to go over anything, I can do that. Strictly voluntary, okay? Yes? No, extra point. So, um, so that's where we are. Now, the student evaluation forms are posted now electronically. I certainly would appreciate it if you would complete one for the course. You know, I want to do well, just like you want to do well, so I certainly would appreciate your feedback. That, would, that's, that means a lot to me if you complete those, okay? All right, so where, where we left off in chapter 11, it's 11 in the newest textbook, it's actually 13 in the older textbook, was with where I was just getting ready to start with the Affordable Care Act, okay? So the Affordable Care Act um, has certain big points that we want to cover. Okay. So the first is that insurers cannot reject persons mm -hmm. with pre-existing conditions anymore. Insurers cannot reject persons with pre existing conditions and that's since two thousand fourteen. So, so that's a big one, and that, that's actually one of the big problems with Obamacare. I mean, and I'm just speaking as an insurance person, okay? Because what can happen is you can have somebody that doesn't have insurance that says, I'm not paying those premiums, and then gets a diagnosis of cancer, and then says, I think I'll go buy health insurance, and they can't be turned down. So see, that's, that's a problem with the whole model of insurance, the whole pooling model that says, Everybody gets in the pool, throws in a little premium, and then the few people that get law that get sick, the money comes out of the pool to pay for them. Okay? Ben. Well, it's chapter eleven in the newest uh, version of the textbook. Okay, it's, it, I'll, I'll give you it. health risks and employee benefits. That's the chapter. If you go back to the older editions, if you have an older edition, it's going to either be twelve or thirteen. So this is a new chapter. It's not a continuation of last. This is a continuation of the chapter we were on. Oh, okay. This is, if you're on the newest section, it's, it's page 11.10. Okay? There's a little block there that sort of summarizes the Affordable Care Act. I'm going to try to Okay, you'll probably know this one, adult children, right? Stay on their parents' plans up to what age? 26. 26. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. What happens if they marry? Anybody know? Actually, nothing. They can stay on even if they're married, but they can't add their spouse. Did you have to watch? Uh, my daughter just turned 26 in January, and I, we weren't even thinking about it. Yeah. And her uh, her opening for her health insurance for her work was like at a different time, and oh, so boy. she could have been without yeah. insurance, but they let her as a special circumstance, like like enroll early, mm -hmm, enroll Good. in the middle of the period. Good. You know. But that's something to that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there's no lifetime limits, no annual limits, or lifetime limits on the policy. Oh, 
let's say on the coverage. Okay. These policies used to have limits. One million, five million, I've seen both of those limits. And if you had somebody who had like an organ transplant or, you know, especially organ transplants, that could blow through the limit. Okay, here's a big one. Insurers have to pay for preventive care. Okay. Insurers must pay for preventive care. With no copay. No copay or deductible. Now, this includes vaccines, cancer screenings, colonoscopies. baby visits. Aww. Okay. That's a big one. Even flu vaccine. There is a very well baby visits. Yeah, well baby visits. And Maybe. even the flu vaccine. to their OBGYN without a referral. So that was another, <coughs> no referral needed for an OBGYN. I think that's the last. And your book does a nice job of summarizing this in this little block, um, which is in all the editions. Basic provisions of the Affordable Care Act of 2010. Okay, so and this is you know I mean these are these are what I expect you to know about Obamacare. Okay. Okay. Unless you have any questions on that, we'll move on to some of the government health care plans, starting with Medicare. Part A. Okay. Medicare was passed in 1965, and it was tacked on to the Social Security Act, okay? So, how does it work? It applies to anyone 65 years old and up who is enrolled in Social Security. That is, they have paid Social Security taxes for at least 10 years. That's how you get, quote, fully insured under the Social Security Act, okay? So once you hit 65, you are automatically enrolled by the government. This is the only section of the Medicare plans where you don't have to enroll, they enroll you. You're enrolled by the government, okay? So what does it cover? It covers inpatient hospital, and it covers hospice care. Hospice care for somebody who's terminally ill. 
So it's somewhat limited in its coverage because it's only applying to inpatient hospital and hospice. Okay. Now we go to Medicare Part B. Outpatient hospital, and covers doctor visits. So between these two, you really do have the lion's share of your medical care, okay? It also covers some physical therapy. So when you have Medicare, do you have both Part A and Part B? No. You have A, and you have to enroll, you have to sign up for B. A, the government automatically enrolls you, but B, you have to sign up after you turn 65. You have to sign up, and you have to start paying premiums. You don't have to pay for A, but you have to start paying premiums for B. So B requires a sign up. Requires you to sign up. If you don't sign up, you'll only have A. Okay, let's talk about Medicare Part C. This is provided, or I should say offered, by private insurers. So A and B are provided by the government. These are provided by the federal government. But, but Part C is offered by private insurers. And it covers everything in A and B. Bless you. So Part C, which is called Medicare Advantage, provides the coverage offered by the federal government in A and B, except the private insurers want to provide it, and then they just get reimbursed by the government. Now, you also have your choice you sign up for this of either you can get an HMO or you can get fee for service that's where you're paying above a deductible or you can get um, sort of a PPO model with a copay and you also have options to buy dental and vision. So Medicare Advantage Part C is very um, popular, very popular. And like I say, it combines what's in what's offered in parts A and B. So it's very popular sort of a one-stop shop, you know, and you're getting a lot, and you don't have to sign up for B and A. Would um, <clears throat> Medicare